So, I've started to go through uh, the new Shaoblin 22 machine that I uh, purchased and uh, find out what needs to be done. I, I knew about the electronics. This is a view from the electronics cabinet on the back side of the machine. Uh, as you can see, it's all empty. There's nothing in here. Uh, I just put the back plate back in that <coughs> holds the uh, components. Uh, it was not in, in the machine when I bought it. Uh, it has some cabling uh, channels as you can see and there's a transformer that's about it there's a few fuses up here a condenser and uh, that's about it on the right side uh, you can see the switches that is part of the operating panel on the back side with the main power switch the direction and speed of the motor and the other switches so I also temporarily just placed some uh, relays or high power contactors I believe they're called they're basically relays but for uh, high voltage 380 volt or 400 volt three phase that we that this machine runs on uh, with um, the thermal fuse, or the thermal relay that is detecting whether uh, you're drawing too much power to the motor. For instance, if the motor is blocked, uh, if the starting current keeps being high after uh, the machine is up and running, stuff like that. So there's supposed to be nine of these contactors or, or high power relays in here there's also supposed to be a controller board for the power feed that is actually made by another company called Lenza I believe they're Swiss as well I have that board uh, it's a circuit board with the electronics to control the power feed uh, there's also supposed to be two more boards up here that controls the logic and switching of the contactors. This bo these boards are run on 24 volt DC and they're switching 48 volt AC uh, that is controlling the contact contactors. So they have two lo lo low voltage uh, connectors that are used to switch these in and out. The two boards are missing and but I do have the diagrams for them I actually for one board I have the actual copper trace for the circuit board uh, so and the other one is controlling the programming that I talked a little bit about uh, in my previous video I, I I'm not sure if I'm gonna implement that programming because I, I don't really see that it will be of any use to me. Uh, what I do want to implement is the end stops for the, the, the table, the traveling. And that's on the same, controlled by the same board. So I've actually made the designs for these two boards. I'm using a freeware software called Fritzing, where you can actually put components in a breadboard, virtual breadboard get the diagrams and then lay out the, the actual circuit board and when you're done with that you could send it for production and I'll, I'll show you those boards as we go along there's also a number of, of fuses that needs to be replaced and, and bought there's a lot of wiring in here as you can obviously see these channels here used to be full of wiring and there's a bunch of cables here coming from the machine from all the switches the the micro switches uh, etc and also wiring coming from the main switches on the side here so all this needs to be
connected. And of course also the high voltage or 380 volt to all these contactors. The inlet is going to be down here. There's going to be a big strip for connecting all the wires. I'll, I'll actually, actually um, have part of that here. So this is, uh, I don't know what they're called, but uh, they're like a, a connecting strip for high voltage. Um, so luckily I have the diagrams for everything. All uh, the wiring from the different switches, it, it's really well documented. Without that, I couldn't have done this job, then I had to improvise. And I actually got to borrow the documentation for a few weeks before I decided to buy the machine to see if I can actually understand. I, I, have, I have a fair bit of knowledge about electronics and electrics, electrical diagrams and things like that. But, you know, this, is, this could be really complicated. And it's uh, 70s technology. <laughs> but my goal now is to put this machine back to... Uh, close to original and I'll, I'll probably talk about that a little bit later um, when it comes to the panels I actually incorrectly assumed that the wires or the cables that we saw in the back was connected to all the switches and things but as you can see I've taken off some of the panels in front and nothing is connected so if I take off this there's no wiring at all connected it's all sitting looser so that sort of increases the job at hand Still, I, I, I do have the documentation. Uh, it's just a lot of work. But, you know, I, I enjoy this type of work, so it's, it's not the end of the world, really. Uh, one other thing that I did was that I opened the gearbox. And here you see the whole head is pulled out from the ram to get access to the bearings uh, for the gearbox. There's actually three uh, bear, bear, uh, axles with bearings inside. And remember, this is, uh, it has mechanical uh, shifting. So uh, the shifting rods and everything that is in here. Uh, one reason I did that was that in the box that followed the machine, there were a couple of shifting rods that obviously uh, were part of the uh, the motor and I opened the end cover where the uh, the plate this uh, control plate with the with the uh, switches that operates the shifting forks sat and I could see that only was only one shifting fork in there so I've taken apart the whole gearbox uh, there's also something funny about the gears and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute so this is the inside of the gearbox in uh, the correct order and uh, as you can see there's three shift forks here and only one of them were installed in the gearbox. These are the rods that the shift forks slide on and are operated by the front switches. Um, so a couple of things I discovered when the, before I, I disassembled the gearbox. One was that this, um, let me see, I can't do that with one hand but you can see this this gear is sliding up and down this gear is supposed to be on top here but this is the 
the gear operated by the shift fork and that didn't didn't move I thought you know maybe I could just install the shift forks and the and the shift rods but this didn't move and it turned out to be that it was glued to the axle so obviously that needed to come out um, another thing I discovered was that for the position of that this is the last gear that meshes with the the motor axle there's a gear mounted on the motor axle and this also is supposed to be a shiftable gear uh, I don't know if I can show going from here meshing with I, I believe the lower the lower one and then going up here the problem is the shift fork doesn't have a place to uh, or, or it doesn't have that ring where the shift fork goes into like here you can see the the shift fork goes into this piece here and can move the whole gear cluster up and down so that was missing here and when I looked at the gear it was obvious that this was not a genuine gear this looks homemade the internal this this gear is uh, original but not this one so there's some machining to be done and I don't have a machine to make gear I've never made a gear before so and I believe you can buy these from Shaolin still, but they're worth their weight in gold. They're expensive, but you know, it's just a standard gear. It shouldn't be that hard to get someone to manufacture it. I just need to find the distances, how far down the shift fork should should grip into the, the gear cluster. And I to do that, I need to put it all back together and measure.